Hey, welcome back to another episode of The King of Random. We've got a really fun project today. Maybe it's just because I'm extra nerdy, but we are building foam swords and they are totally legitimately used to hit people with and that's where the fun comes in. So let's just jump right in. All right, so here's what you're gonna need for this project. We have some camp foams, just a camp pad. You can get it at Walmart. We've got a piece of pipe insulation. These are also easy to get at any uh, store like Lowe's or Home Depot. Same thing, we've got some rope. This is 3 8 inch. If your hands are bigger than mine, you might scale that up, but I find that this works well for almost everybody. Any material you want, any type of fabric to make the cover of the sword. And optionally, you can have this exercise pad. It's a lot like yoga mat, but it's a lot thicker. And so again, this is an option and you'll see how we're gonna use that in the end. For the core of the sword, this is fiberglass rebar. It's dirt cheap, it's easy to get. I like to get it at Lowe's because it's pink and that's my favorite. Optionally, if you wanted to have something that's a little bit lighter, you could use a graphite shafted golf club. We will cut the head off of this thing and it comes with the handle pre-built, so that's kind of nice, but very, very impact resistant, not too flexible, and perfect for what we're doing. And then here we've got four different kinds of tape. Yes, they're all important. So we've got electrical tape. This is cloth tape, also known as hockey tape or athletic tape. This is just a double-sided tape. This is for rugs, to keep your rugs from sliding around, but there's a bunch of different kinds. A Scotch makes one, Gorilla makes one, they'll all be fine. But for how much you get here, this is definitely your most economical choice. And then some duct tape. Here we've got contact cement. And contact cement is a very special kind of glue, and I'll show you how to use this because it's not intuitive. But yeah, we'll learn how to do that together today. Gorilla glue is also fantastic. We add a little bit of water to the Gorilla glue, which seems kind of crazy, but surprise, surprise, if you read the instructions, it'll tell you exactly how to do this and that is super important to getting the best adhesion and we'll just need some simple tools measuring tape hacksaw just a utility knife this is a steak knife I found at like a secondhand store it's like 50 cents it's not important just anything that cuts and then a marker is super helpful well let's get started all right so the first thing you need to decide is how long do you want your sword my favorite one is 33 inches long and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take an inch and a half off of that measurement because by the time we're finished, we're gonna add some additional material. And so our core length will be 31 and a half. So I'm just gonna mark that here. And we can go ahead and cut that. Okay, so we'll just clamp it, not too tight. We don't wanna break anything, but just enough to be sturdy. Here's my mark. And so we can just take this hacks off. There we go. So in order to make the handle, we're only gonna make it about a third of the length of the overall sword. And I wanted one that was gonna be 33 inches, so we've got 11 inches to play with. From the bottom here is gonna to be totally fine. It's just an about. So I'm gonna make that mark. Also, I'm gonna come in right here at two inches, so we leave room for the pommel. And now we'll build the handle. All right, so this is my double-sided tape. And we just need a piece that's gonna fit right between these marks here at two inches and 11 inches. And you can use scissors or whatever you have handy. It makes no difference. And we'll just stick it right here in between those two marks. Press it down so that we know it's stuck and we'll peel off this layer. There we go. All right. So all I'm gonna do here, grab these ends, kind of twist this around. And now that is covered with that double-sided tape. We're gonna prep our electrical tape so we have a piece that's ready to go, and then get our rope ready. Now, when you wrap the rope around this handle, it needs to be snug, but it doesn't have to be crazy tight. So we're just gonna stick it right there to the end, and again, just pulling it snug, but not really, really tight. 
Just wrapping it around. All right, now that I've gone a couple of rounds, I'm gonna take this electrical tape that I have ready and just stick it over this end. Otherwise, it's gonna to wanna to come apart while I'm working on it, and I don't want that. And so this will actually hold for years. I've got several swords that I've made that are still in fantastic shape, and you don't need any kind of glue here. Just this tape is plenty. So now we're at the end, and you could use your steak knife for this, or your razor blade, doesn't really matter. We're just gonna cut this rope. And then one more piece of electrical tape to finish this end. And just like that, your handle is already done. All right, so now we're gonna build the pommel, and what we need is we need two inches of this pipe insulation right here. So we'll just measure that out. And as you're cutting, you may notice that it's not totally straight. That's fine, it won't hurt anything. You'll also notice that the dimensions here are very, very different. And so that's not gonna work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap the base of this with duct tape until it meets those dimensions right there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put this piece of foam on the end. So we're just gonna take a piece of this rug tape that I had ready. That is now all the way around. Now you gotta be careful doing this because you don't want it to stick until you're ready. Right there. I'm just gonna try to wrap that around. Perfect, perfect. So now we've got the handle complete, the pommel is getting pretty close. We do need just a piece of camp foam right here and then we're gonna move on to the blade. But let me show you. Sweet. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get kind of a rough measurement here and just make sure that I can cover that piece. And that's gonna be good enough for now. We're gonna set that to the side and we're gonna start working on the blade portion of the weapon. All right, now so for the golf club, what you're gonna see is that it's a little fatter at the bottom than it is up here. And in order to get things to adhere correctly, we just have to trim this down just a touch. Excellent. Now we're gonna do the same process we did with the other one. We're just gonna take this same double-sided tape, start wrapping it around. Got another pommel piece that I cut. Boom, there we go. Very nice. All right, so we're ready to measure for the blade now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the length of the core that's exposed, we're just gonna measure that and then we'll add half an inch. So right here, it looks like I've got 20 and a half, so I'm gonna go with 21 is my measurement here. All right, and so we've got the same thing here. We should have the same measurement. Yep, 20 and a half, so 21 is also our measurement here. So 21 is what we've come up with. We'll just make a mark. There we go. And so all we need now is something straight. Oh, here we go. Just lay it across those two lines. And you can use this knife, your razor knife, doesn't really matter. This foam is pretty easy to cut. Perfect. And this is what we're gonna need to make our blades. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a sword called a bat, which means instead of being thin like a sword blade, it's actually gonna be more rounded. And that gives you multiple directions to strike with that are all valid hits. And so we want it two and a half inches wide. There we go, and we'll need five of these. So we just want it five, another one at seven and a half, here at 10, and then we've got 12 and a half, perfect. And so we're gonna do the same measurements down here on the bottom. Two and a half, five, seven and a half, 10, 12 and a half. Perfect. 
Now we've got five of these. We'll set one aside. We don't need that just yet. And then these ones are the ones we're going to work with. Now, I had the contact cement, but for ease of use, I found this ketchup bottle and then put some of that in here. So it goes on really easily. So contact cement is fascinating because this is not like a normal glue. We're not just going to stick these together and leave it. That won't work. But what we'll do, we'll kind of rub this together because we want to get the glue all over the entire length. Top, bottom, side to side, everything needs to be covered. And so you can see that our edges are not covered yet. So we're going to add a little more. We just want enough to spread so that the entire length gets coverage. And it really is important that you get every last bit of those edges and corners because if you leave a spot that doesn't have the glue, that's invariably where it starts to pull apart. Now the trick to this stuff is you have to let it sit, uh, not until it's totally dry, but until it's tacky. If you can see the light reflecting off of it, it's still wet. So we're gonna wait until it's tacky so it'll be able to touch it, but it just barely feels tacky. So that's what we're going for here. So those two are ready to sit there. And now we're gonna prep our next two. Okay, so now we have our last strip of foam. We wanna take our sword and lay it right in the center. So I'm gonna trace these sides, front and back. And so we've got the outline of where that core is gonna be, and we're gonna cut that out. And we're gonna need just about a half an inch off the end of that and the rest, that piece we don't need. But now we'll use these. Okay, so here we are. And if we look closely, we will see that the glue has set. I can just tap my finger to it and it's just barely lightly tacky. So when you stick these together, they're not coming apart again. So you gotta be really sure that they're exactly where you want. Just line up the ends, start rolling it together. Try to keep it straight. Otherwise, you will glue those curves into your sword permanently. All right, so there we go, that's one, and we'll do the other. And I'm using my front fingers here to guide these two sides together as straight as I can, because if I made any mistakes on the measurements, then one side's gonna be off, and I'd rather have one side dead on so that I can trim it later if I want to. There we go. So now what happens is we've got this part and this part that we can lay on top. And then we've got these two sections that we cut out that are gonna go into the sides. And so we're gonna prep the glue for these sides now. This is why it's called contact cement, because just like earlier when I put those together, once it contacts, that's when all the magic happens. Now here's the tricky business. This is where you can either wear some rubber gloves or I don't mind getting a little bit on my fingers. A lot of friction, so you just rub your fingers together really hard. We'll pull this glue off your hands, but no soap yet that I have found actually works. Okay, that looks pretty good. We'll let those dry. So while we're waiting for that glue to set a little bit, we're just going to work on the pommel just a touch. So what we've got here is we've got this gap that would be nice to close. So we'll just take a little bit of duct tape, pinch that together. Now I'm not trying to compress the rest of the foam, I'm just trying to close that gap because we do want this to be nice and spongy. And then now we're gonna put some glue on here just like we did with the other foam. Now here's something to watch out for though, because if you can get in here and see this, this is really smooth. So these cells are closed, but when you look here where it's been cut, these cells are open, and these open cells will accept a whole lot more glue. So we're just gonna pour some glue in here. 
and we'll just kind of rub it around. So when these are ready, we'll just stick those together and then we'll trim it to shape from there. Our glue has dried, we're ready to go. We're gonna start right here with this pommel. And then as you can see, just a little bit tacky. We'll just stick that on there, nice and firm. And it holds, that's what we want. Here, we'll set this to the side and we're gonna lay in these strips. Now the glue is fascinating. It'll actually cause the foam to expand and contract. And so sometimes you'll cut pieces that are exactly the same length and then when you put them on, they'll be slightly different. That's very, very normal. So definitely nothing to worry about. Now, one thing that's super important here is we're about to put in our core, but this is where the Gorilla Glue goes. So you'll just run a nice, nice bead of that all the way down. So that's about how much we need. So without getting it on the contact cement, we're just gonna run water down this glue there we go. So now we're gonna lay in the core. Press it down, and I'm actually gonna spin it so that it gets glue all over all sides of it. Spin it both directions, and there we go. We've got about a half inch at the top, that's what we were looking for. And then we will just take this last piece and lay it right over the top. So this is what I was talking about, how the foam will expand and contract, or if you do it unevenly, but we can just trim off the top, be very simple to make that nice and straight. Okay, we're gonna take just a dab of this Gorilla Glue, put it in this open hole here. Gorilla Glue will expand to up to four times its own volume. Snag one of these little guys that we Got earlier, shove it in there. And we're just gonna take the corners off of all of these. And this gives a sort of more rounded look. And it looks way better. Do the same thing down here as far as trimming this excess off. Okay, and we'll also chamfer these edges. Do the same thing here. All right, we've got one more piece to add to the tip. That was this piece, if you recall. Now you can just use your camp foam if you don't have any of this exercise mat and you can just put a little cap on it that way. This gives it just a little more cushion when you stab people. We wanna kill our friends, but we don't actually wanna hurt anybody. So we're gonna use this today, and we'll just do the same process with the contact cement that we did. We'll glue that on top, and then let me show you how to finish the pommel first, though. So this is where our athletic tape comes in. You'll need about four strips of this, so we're just gonna attach it right over the top of this electrical tape that we installed earlier. And this stuff can be really tricky to tear, you have to pinch it really close together and then really go after it. Or you could use some scissors. So I just did an X there, and then we'll just do another one to cover all these open spaces. And since this athletic tape likes to peel, we're just gonna cover the ends with this electrical tape. Just right here next to the pommel. So there's your pommel done. That's a good place to write your name. And then we've just got to glue on the one piece here and then make a cover for it and we're done. Now, one thing you might be concerned about is this core still slides. This Gorilla Glue takes at least 24 hours to really cure and it also will expand. So when we're done with this thing, we're gonna set it somewhere where if a little glue manages to seep out of the end and drip down, it's not gonna get on anything important. So keep that in mind. We just wanna set it down in the next hour and then not touch it for at least a day. For our last piece here, just gonna cut off a section that's about appropriate. 
We could cut off a larger section if we wanted to, like we did earlier, and then just trim it after the fact. Or we could just trace, and that's fine too. This corner will need to come off as well. If your exercise mat has ridges on it, like this one does, you'll want to glue the flat side to your sword. You'll just get more surface area to adhere. Okay, let's let this set up and then I'll show you the cover. All right, so our glue is now ready. This is literally the last piece. We can just slide it on here, squish it down, we're ready to go. So all we need now is the cover. So I'm not gonna show you guys my mad sewing skills, but I will demonstrate quickly. It's pretty easy. You just fold this over and then I would just pin it here and then you sew a straight line and then across here, you can also just sew another straight line and you basically got a sleeve. It's just a really quick, easy sleeve. Now I have one over here that's ready to go. And because I am far more eccentric than what the black would call for, this is what I decided to go with. So you just slide this thing on. I always make these longer than I need because if you make them too short, then you have problems. So now we've got our sleeve on, and so I'm just gonna go down maybe three-ish inches, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off the excess. We'll get our electrical tape out. We'll just kinda pinch this down to the handle and wrap it. Now, I do know some people that do drawstrings on these. Uh, personally, I feel like the tape is significantly easier because if at any time you have to do any repairs on the blade it's really easy to take that tape off pull off the cover and then you're there same thing like if your rope ever gets loose which it probably won't but if it does again you just take the tape off you unwind the rope you put some new double-sided tape on there and then you reinstall the same rope and it's all good so here we've got this one with the fiberglass rebar and then this is the other one that i made with the golf club shaft. Both of these are gonna be absolutely fantastic, nice and lightweight, highly impact resistant, and you can beat up your friends, or your kids, or your parents. So, until next time.